welcome back to the football terrace. It's a big, big day for Portugal today. We can't get away from it. They're up against a very tough side in Switzerland. A genuine dark horse of this tournament. A team that a lot of us kind of overlooked at the start. They won't do too much. Not really thinking about them. Not really worried about them. And throughout the group stages, they were very strong. They were very hard to beat. They got forward well in the attack. And they've really demonstrated that they're a solid, solid outfit. And a team that maybe doesn't have you scared, maybe that doesn't have you panicking, but certainly lets you know that they're there. And then you look at Portugal. It's been a very strange tournament for them because they, they were good in their first couple of games. I don't think we can deny that they, they were not good. They, they, they played decent football. They created chances, especially the second game. Especially the second game, Bruno Fernandes getting his brace. There was some real quality in there, in my opinion. Against Ghana, they were the better team. But of course, they had some defensive mishaps, nearly conceded an equaliser at the end. And against South Korea, when they rotated and took their best players out, they really did. They really did struggle. And I don't think anybody would deny that. So what did they do today? How do they go about this match? Because for me, there's an elephant in the room. And people think that there's an agenda because people love him so much. But I keep saying this, and it seems to be falling upon deaf ears. But I've got a tremendous amount of respect for Cristiano Ronaldo. But he is a major problem for this side. He's a major problem for them. There, There is talk after his... Anger at being substituted during the game against South Korea early. The Santos has a bit of a problem. There have been a lot of moments in training between then and now. Uh, a lot of frustration coming through in the player. A lot of annoyance in the individual. Maybe this sense of, maybe he's getting a sense of his own mortality in many ways. Mortality within the game. That I really am not the guy that I used to be. He, he's registered barely any shots in this tournament. He's been really uninspiring. He's an influence in the games in the way in which that he wants to. And it's sad to see. Like, I'm genuinely sad to see it. Because Cristiano Ronaldo is a... He isn't just a hero and a legend of the, of the game. He is in the... In, in, for me, he's in, he's in my top two football players of all time. Top two. To ever kick a ball. Him and Messi, neck and neck. Everybody else is behind them both. Based on every metric that I hold dear, not just ability, but the goal scored, the assists, the trophies, the individual awards play a small part in that as well. And then, of course, the most important element of the true great, the ability to maintain this. From the age of 18 until 38, he has performed at the highest level. It's 20 years. The peak's high, and that peak has been high for over a decade. Over 15 years, that peak has been at Ballon d'Or level. It's unprecedented, barring Lionel Messi, which is why I put them both as number one and number two. But I truly believe if Ronaldo starts today, I truly believe if Ronaldo is that key figure and he's left on this pitch for too long, without speed and quality around him, Portugal will go out today. And I'm sorry to say it, Ronaldo. But I think it's going to be a good buy. I think it's going to be the end of the road. I think it's going to be your final curtain call when it comes to international football. And Santos plays a part in this. If you're going to play Ronaldo, he's got to have speed around him. We've seen Argentina improve during this World Cup now that they've added younger, faster, better quality players around him. Enzo Hernandez being added to the team behind him. Julian Alvarez coming into the team. The likes of Di Maria and Lissandro Martinez, who are just not quick enough. Lotaro Martinez, sorry. That are just not quick enough. Have been taken out. This has allowed Messi, in his latter years, who can't run like he used to, to still utilize the great skills in which he's got. And Ronaldo needs that same help. And I know people don't want to admit it. I know people don't want to say it. But Ronaldo needs that help as well. Rafael Leal has to play. Bruno Fernandes has to be further up the pitch. There has to be speed and quality around him, close to him, to support him. 
he can't do it by himself at the age that he is and the condition that he finds his body in. And he's not in bad condition for a man of his age. And I understand why I understand why Ronaldo thinks people are jealous of him, why like ex pros are angry, especially if they're similar ages, because they think he thinks, well, look, they're just angry because they're not playing and I am. But people aren't angry at Ronaldo. People aren't jealous of Ronaldo. They don't want to see him go out like this. I don't want to see an a poor, unimpactful, uninspiring, uneventful. End to Ronaldo's international career. It isn't befitting. It isn't befitting of everything else he's achieved before him. I'm not saying he should have retired as young as, as Eric Cantona did. But, you know, Eric Cantona went out and people really only remember the good times. Zidane went out and people only really remember the good times. You've got to know when to bow out in the game. If you hang around too long, if too many of those poor performances come in, it leaves a lasting legacy. People forget the early years. I won't. I'll always have Ronaldo in my top two. Unless somebody else comes in and surpasses him and Messi, they're my top two. Point blank, period, forever. But I just don't see a way Portugal win today with Ronaldo starting if he doesn't have speed around him, if he doesn't have runners around him, if he doesn't have legs around him. And I hope I'm wrong. Because I'd love to see him score. I would love to see Portugal progress to the next round. By then, we'll know whether it's Morocco or Spain that they'll play. I, I kind of want Morocco to do it. But I also would love to see a Spain-Portugal quarter, quarterfinal. The, the, the history, the rivalry, the stick between the two nations, it gives it a little bit more needle. It gives it a little bit more je ne sais quoi. <laughs> you know, it, it just gives it a, a different level to the game. And I have on the Hitch app, which you can download now for free and earn money for taking part in their polls, doing their predictions, and of course, taking part in their football quizzes. Download it now for free using that QR code or the link in the description. But I have predicted a Spain win. But I am predicting, I am predicting that Switzerland will knock out Portugal. That is what I'm predicting. And I can't look beyond them because I know Ronaldo is going to start. I know Rafael Leal is going to be on the bench. But if any of those two factors change, Leal starts with Ronaldo or Ronaldo's on the bench, Portugal will win. They just can't, they can't win with the setup they've been using against a team as good as Switzerland. They, they, look what happened against South Korea, who are a better team than Uruguay, who are a better team than Ghana. They just are. And in my opinion, Switzerland are better than all those sides. So Santos has got a big decision to make today. He may, he may already made it. You know, he's probably already picked his team. The players probably already know who's starting and who isn't. But it's a big, 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 big day today indeed. Listen, I want your thoughts and I want your feelings on this. Smash the like and share button for us as well. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.